Hello, everyone, and welcome to Tell Tales. up everyone well it's been a mad couple of months with the new live album coming out and spending time in the studio working on the next one so the podcast been a bit behind sorry about that so i've had one of those weeks where everything just seems to bug me every little annoying particle in this universe seems to have hunted me down and tried to get on my nerves i thought it was only me but then i realized the whole world is living in this stressed out pulling hair out need to go out and drink a pint kind of bubble Then I thought, I know, I'll chat about it in the next podcast. It's the annoying things in everyday life, like spending a penny, literally. So I was out and about last week, needed the loo and passed a public convenience. Except it wasn't very convenient at all. It was locked and you had to put 20p in the little money slot to enter the loo. Which is all fine and dandy if you have 20p. So you scratch around in your purse trying not to spill your hard-earned pocket money all over the pitch black pavement because the lights outside the public inconveniences are knackered. You can't find 20p. Eventually, you realise that there's a pub about two minutes walk away and you figure you're actually saving money by walking to the pub and putting that 20p towards a pint and using their toilet, which will inevitably be cleaner and you won't have to wade through a smelly puddle to spend a penny or 20 Another thing I've noticed just lately is how many hot taps have a sign over them spelling out just how hot the water is going to be, which is fair enough. Random thought, but does the word lavatory come from the Spanish word lavar, meaning to wash, which is spelled L-A-V-A-R, or is it the molten stuff resembling water that inevitably comes with a polite ouch and a cloud of steam from the tap? Instead of putting a sign up warning you that you're going to get scolded, why not just make the water a bit cooler? Whilst we're on the subject of spending, the one thing that we can't avoid in life, some take great pleasure in it, some despise it beyond belief. I even did a whole podcast about it earlier in the year, and that's shopping. So, I like to be comfy. I don't always look like I'm about to walk on stage ready for a gig. Sometimes I'll just wear jeans and a slouchy woolly hoodie, just for comfort. You know those times, no makeup, hair all over the shop, literally. Maybe it's just me, but have you ever noticed if you walk into a shop and you're on a normal, casual looking day, you get followed around by a security guard. They take great pleasure in making you feel like you're about to commit the next Hatton Garden heist in m and I've even had it in my favourite two fast-growing supermarkets, whose names are anagrams of Dill and Dial. They've followed me around the middle aisles, looking at me with great suspicion. Do I really look that desperate to buy an inflatable dinosaur, chainsaw and sink plunger? Or do they just think that I'm planning the next great Yorkshire bank robbery? It's the same in my favourite bath bomb shop. Well, it's not the same. They don't follow me around thinking I'm going to attempt to carry off a bank raid with 23 lavender bath bombs and a green sludgy face mask as a disguise. It's the way they pounce on you as soon as you poke your head through the door. Hiya! Can I help you? Looking for anything special today? Ooh, I do love your lipstick. What shade is that? You should try our glitter, shimmer, sparkle, blueberry and amber smoothie bath oil bar. It's the Christmas special, only available for three months and our store's got the exclusive. It would really relax you. Did I mention that you've got lovely eyes? A whole month's worth of compliments and subtle sales tactics, all without even taking a breath. All I want to do is nip in, choose my bath bombs for the next month, grab a face cleanser, pay and leave. I don't want a hand scrub facial cleanse therapy session with added cocoa butter and neroli oil. Perhaps it's just me who's a bit antisocial, but I just like my own personal space. Another thing that really mithers me is when the space invaders are out in force. I was in the bank a couple of weeks ago and this bloke was stood behind me. I was slightly concerned that he was either inhaling my hair or that I'd become a ghost and he was trying to walk through me because he was stood that close to the back of me. Why do people feel the need to stand so close? It's like they're freezing cold, don't want to put the heating on and they're trying to keep warm from your body heat. Mither, by the way, is a northern English word for making a fuss. Don't you think it's got a nice lilt to it? I can't be mithered. 
Another thing that really bugs me when I'm out shopping is people who munch their way through a croissant or give the kids a bag of sweets to keep them quiet while they walk around. When I was a kid, and still to this day, you didn't open something and start eating it until you've paid for it. That's like cracking open a bottle of Titanic plum porter in the booze aisle, walking around swigging it to make the shopping trip more bearable and promising to pay for it at the tills. Nowadays, so many people do it. Yes, you get the honest ones who'll put the empty wrapper on the conveyor belt at the end, but I bet there are a large proportion of people who don't. Surely you can't be that hungry that you can't wait 10 minutes until you've paid for it and gone outside to start snaffling it. Also, the dumpers. The ones who change their mind, they don't really need the seeded batch loaf that they had in the trolley for the last 20 minutes, with the fabric conditioner stood on top squashing it, so they dump it in the frozen pizza section. Why can't they walk back to where they got it from and pop it back on the shelf? It's good exercise. Maybe it's because their time is so important that they can't spend the extra couple of minutes walking the three aisles to the bread aisle to pop it back. Speaking of time being so important, have you noticed how every time you go to the doctors, you get there early, you sit there listening to the coughers and sneezers, subtly wrapping your scarf over your face and hoping that all the ill people in the waiting room don't have any deadly disease that they're splurting out all over the place. You check your watch to see your appointment time and it comes and goes, then eventually 30 minutes after your appointment time, you get summoned. Is it that their time is more valuable than yours? Or just that they're making you feel like you've really earned the appointment and you must be incredibly ill if you put up with all that just to see the doctor? So, the coughers and sneezers, the snookers and breathers, all have one thing in common. Noise. As in, they all make noises. There's nothing worse than being stuck on a train or in close proximity to someone who breathes like they've got a kazoo lodged in the throat. Or what about the typical person I always end up sat next to on the train? The one who pulls out the garlic, chicken and pickled onion sandwich and then proceeds to munch it with their mouth open in the noisiest and most repulsive way. It's like watching a washing machine going round whilst listening to an elephant slop through mud. Utterly grim. And try listening to somebody slurping a pot noodle. You'll actually feel violent after 10 minutes. And another thing, the flavours of pot noodles. I don't think the beef and tomato ones have ever even seen a cow or a piece of fruit. Or the chicken ones are chicken. They're just flavouring. Does that mean in countries that eat dog meat, they have one called not poodle? Actually, the noisy eaters. Maybe I'm just being a little bit harsh. They may have some sort of mouth problem where the lips don't close or something. But what about the ones who can help it? The tappers and clickers. You know the ones. They sit at a desk, tapping the pen or clicking the on-off switch on the pen repetitively until that's the only thing you can hear and you feel as if your head's going to explode. Anyway, let's get away from all this stress and move on to transport. Obviously, doing what I do, I spend a lot of time in a van or a car, mainly after gigs, exploring the UK motorway network in the middle of the night. I say exploring the motorway network, it's more like being diverted off the motorway network, down every A and B road, then across a roundabout to a tidgy little one-track lane with no street lamps for three hours, until the diversion brings you one exit further up the M1. I totally get that the roadworks can't happen in rush hour. But if you're driving at 3am, there's only three things that you desire. To get to wherever you need to be quickly and without any problems, i.e. an airport, to get home and to bed as soon as you can. And the third thing, where's the loo? If you're lucky enough to still be on a motorway and not diverted to Middle Earth at 3am, your luck will have probably run out if you fancy in a coffee to keep you awake. How come the coffee shops in motorway services all close at about 10pm? If you're falling asleep and need a coffee, odds on it's going to be in the middle of the night. You'll probably find that the only thing that resembles coffee comes from one of those awful vending machines in the services shop. The one that's run out of milk and the person who's meant to be running the shop has magically vanished into thin air so you can't even ask them to make the machine work. Or if you get far enough to get a black coffee, you can't pay for it because the whole of the services staff have been abducted by aliens. If you can find a services with the shop open and you happen to get a triple mocha chocca frappe latte with vanilla syrup, seven sugars and three extra espresso shots just to keep you awake, you'll notice that you'll be presented with a paper straw. Gone are the plastic straws, bad as they were for turtles, they were much more practical for actually drinking a liquid beverage through. 
The new straws, they just disintegrate by the time you've got back to the car and you end up trying to drink through a sloppy cardboard tube. Surely this is actually creating more problems for planet Earth because you need three paper straws to get through one drink. That's three times the amount of litter than the one plastic straw. If you're lucky enough to find a services that has the golden arches, you know the place. The fast food place that sells, well, beef burgers. You'll tempt fate by asking for a sneaky 3am cheeseburger, only to be greeted with the person on the till telling you that they've run out of beef burgers and you can only have chicken nuggets. How can a beef burger shop only have chicken nuggets left? Maybe it's all a ploy to combat my next bugbear. People who can't be bothered walking two metres away to put their rubbish in a bin. If there's no food to buy, there's no litter to abandon at a table, or even worse, out of the car window. Or maybe their excuse is that the car next to them has parked so close to their car that they can't even open the door properly to get to the bin. Speaking of close proximity, drivers that get right up your bum. So you're driving along, adhering to the speed limit. The cars in front of you are all doing the same. So you can't go any faster or past them for that matter. And you get some plum right on your back bumper, flashing and waving their arms about like they're trying to swap flies, trying to tell you to move over, even though they can't get any further ahead if you did move over. Or maybe these impatient drivers are just trying to be really helpful and help you read the number plate in the rearview mirror just in case they crash into you and you need it for the insurance company. At the opposite end of the spectrum, you have the 35 mile an hour drivers, the ones whose accelerator pedal is stuck at 35. Whether you're in a 30 limit or a 60 limit, they dawdle along at 35 in a 60, clueless that there's a three mile queue of traffic behind them. And then they approach a little village that drops down to 20 and they speed through it at 35, as if they're on a mission to be the next Lewis Hamilton. Utterly bonkers. I shouldn't be so harsh to drivers though really, not when you get cyclists who insist on whizzing down the side of your car and going through red lights. I think some cyclists either have immortality or just stupidity. The other night I was driving home and there were a couple of youths, gosh you know you're getting old when you refer to people as youths. They had no cycling helmets, no lights on, cycling and doing wheelies all over the road as if they were auditioning for Total Wipeout, all very silly. Ooh, this podcast is getting very ranty, isn't it? I'll lighten the mood with thoughts of holidays and travel. We all love a little jaunt off somewhere. Well, we love getting to a desired destination. The actual process of getting there is one of the most stressful situations known to humankind. Never mind the motorway closure getting to the airport, the queuing at the check-in desk. For me, the most stressful part is the security check-in. The horrendous rigmarole of oiking every liquid item, electronic item and potentially deadly nail file out of your suitcase, which will inevitably be harbouring a sneaky lipstick in a stray sock somewhere, so that you get called back through to the dark side and made to feel like you're smuggling some exotic cat with you when you've really just misplaced your max factor. I think there's a prerequisite for the job application where you have to have some sort of dictator issues. You have to have that power crazed nature to even apply. If you don't have those torturous traits, you don't even get through to the job interview. I guess another thing that bugs me in the airport is people's unnecessary need to queue. So we all have an allocated seat on the plane. Most airlines nowadays are a total pain and they don't let you take your little cabin bags on board anymore anyway. So why, as soon as the gate is announced, do 100 people all run through the airport to get to the gate, to stand there for 45 minutes, all huffing and puffing at having to queue? I know certain airlines like to charge you for everything, but they're not going to make you stand up for the whole flight. You've got a seat. You don't even have a suitcase to try and cram into the overhead locker. So why on earth are you queuing, as if it's going to board and take off any quicker with you hyperventilating about it? And then there's those people in airports who don't queue, but also have no seat etiquette. It's really not too cool to put your bags on the seat next to you, or lay sprawled across three chairs because you're a little bit tired. We're all a little bit tired from travelling, and would like somewhere to sit without you taking up three seats and having your feet in someone's sandwich. Speaking of queuing, I do approve of queuing etiquette at the appropriate moments. For example, getting on a bus, or when ordering drinks at a bar. I remember being on holiday attempting to get onto a bus in Malaga and at the time I'd knackered my knee and I was in a full leg brace and crutches. Some of you will have remembered these gigs where I would stubbornly stand up for the whole gig and try my best to use the crybaby wah pedal with the dodgy leg whilst trying not to fall over. 
Anyway, back to the bus. All of a sudden, I was surrounded by a swarm of people descending on the entrance to the bus where I was halfway up the stairs, pushing and shoving to get on the bus first. Absolutely ridiculous. Spanish buses are massive. There were plenty enough seats. Is it a competition to see who can get on first, or potentially just to see who comes off best with a crutch to the shins, or perhaps just a test of my patience? I actually had a dream the other week. Maybe it was a nightmare. I dreamt I was at a bar and a giant bloke pushed in front of me. I prodded him in the stomach and gave him a piece of my mind. I called him a few choice names. Obviously, I probably wouldn't most likely do this in real life, but are all of my pent-up frustrations manifesting in my dreams? Back to holidays. Well, tourists. There's nothing more annoying than walking around and nearly getting a selfie stick thrust in your eye or the tourists that have their photo taken in front of a window or statue and their equivalent of David Bailey's stood six metres away in the middle of the pavement taking the picture so you feel awkward about walking in front of the camera. But if you don't, you'll be waiting a week whilst they perfect their polished pouty pose. I guess a lot of the frustrating things all boil down to whether you have good, polite, social etiquette and good manners. I was always raised that you should be nice to people and hold doors open, let other people go first, that sort of thing. I think the thing that bugs me equally as much as when people don't execute these good social graces is when people don't say thank you. So you've held the door open for them and they look at you like you're Harvey Nix's door person, stood there for the good of your health to let them through because they obviously are emitting and wafting about special superiority atoms that you're just lucky enough to be in the presence of. So by holding the door open for them, you should actually feel grateful that they've graced you with their perfection and superiority. Thus, they don't need to say thank you to you. Anyway, yep, I do say the words, no problem, or my pleasure, every time this happens under my breath, in my own little passive-aggressive way. Maybe it's just some people, the sort of people who think that everyone on the train wants to hear the ins and outs of their private life, so they bellow into a phone. Really, why do they actually need a phone? I would assume that the person on the other end of the phone can probably hear them from about six miles away with the way they're squawking down the line. Also, automated phone calls. So you ring up the doctors or the insurance company or tech support for something, and what are you greeted with? A selection of options that you've forgotten by the time you've listened through to them all. So you end up hanging up and redialing to make a note of which option you should have chosen. Press 1 for tech support. Press 2 for billing options. Press 3 for upgrades. If you'd like to leave us, press 4. For everything else, press 5. Except for anything useful, speaking to anyone who is actually helpful. For the will to live, if you'd like to speak to a real person, please hold for another 36 minutes of horrendously naff and ear-splitting hold music when someone might answer and then you'll inevitably get cut off and have to go through this palaver all over again. But that's okay for us because you're paying 45p a minute for the privilege of of listening to our answer machine. Beep! Although, I think I'd rather talk to the robot automated call service than the real PPI called callers. My dad has actually started getting more and more elaborate with them. His current trick is agreeing with the caller. Basically, the conversation goes Hi, I hear you've been in an accident that wasn't your fault and you could be eligible for some compensation. Yes, I have. I'm so glad you called. That's my dad, by the way. My bad version of him. Please can you tell us the details of the accident? Of course. I was driving along a road and I had an accident with a bus. Oh, that's terrible. What happened? Well, I was driving and this car came out of nowhere, ploughed right into me. Was anyone injured? Oh, gosh, yeah, everyone. I was driving the bus. Really? Yeah, I was transporting a coach full of people in Spain. The crash was in Spain? Absolutely. I'm still there now, actually. Line goes dead. Apparently, they don't want to call abroad. Dad's much better at it than I am. He gets very elaborate and inventive with it. I secretly think he enjoys it. I just tell him where to go and hang up. He also does this new thing where he goes, Hello? 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 Can you hear me? Hello? Hello? Can you hear me? And he keeps repeating it over and over and over. And they end up doing the same for minutes on end at both ends of the phone line. There's another about running down a nun on a zebra crossing, but that's another story. Maybe it's a habit of his. So, with the modern world of phones and technology, it brings with it its little annoyances. Silly posts on social media with daft photos of people with lips that look like they've had an allergic reaction. Sausage leg photos to tell the world that you're somewhere sunny. 
These actually just look like you've opened a tin of ye old oak hot dog sausages and thrown them on a beach. What's with the filters that make your eyes look like the people in the Soundgarden Black Hole Sun video? If you ever go missing, or you're wanted for something, how will anybody know what you actually look like by the time you've made your skin perfectly peachy, lost six stone, covered your roots and drawn on some fake brows, all the while popping some dog ears on top of your head? Maybe this has come from a social movement towards celebrities and reality TV. That's another of my massive bugbears, NAF reality television. It's so fake and ridiculous. I've thankfully never watched trash like Love Island, but I'm guessing the premise is a load of falsely beautiful and fickle people with the intelligence of a courgette. They all whiz off somewhere on holiday, strip off into bikinis to parade around and try and pull somebody equally as fickle and fake looking and with an equal IQ. To me, it's a cross between a night out in any major city in the UK and a mating experiment on hamsters. I'm just not sure how this mind-numbing tosh has become interesting or enthralling and do people actually believe that that is real life? Another little annoyance when it comes to entertainment, adverts. A few radio stations I listen to seem to have adverts literally after every other song and they're all the same adverts. Yorkshire Broadband, wepurchaseanyvehicle.com, did somebody say eat feet, etc. Oh, and spam emails trying to sell me something that I'll never want. Invitations to accept money that nobody wants from all around the world. Offers of encounters with the opposite sex from all around the world too. And enough tablets to help to go around the world twice. I'm surprised laptops don't open themselves. So without sounding like an Alanis Morissette song, isn't it just a pain when you're in a real rush to be somewhere? But you need to have a bath and you need to have some tea. So you've set your bath running and put the pizza in the oven. The bath is absolutely scorchio, so you put the cold tap on with the hopes that you can get the temperature just perfect. Just right for you to jump in, have a quick splash while the pizza cooks. The pizza packet says, pop it in the oven on gas mark 5 for 30 minutes. So 30 minutes comes and goes. You've had your bath, which ended up being freezing because the cold tap came out faster than you anticipated, which also means that you've splashed half the contents all over the bathroom floor and all over your dress that was on the floor next to the bath. That's now ringing wet through as well. All down to the laws of physics and water displacement. So you jump out, shivering. The pizza's still cold in the middle, so you put the temperature up a couple of notches, leave it for 10 minutes whilst you slap your war paint on, and return to a kitchen full of smoke and something that resembles a paving slab rather than a pizza. Kebab en route, I think. I hope I've not stressed you out too much. I think I need a nap, a pint, and to watch an episode of Dawson's Creek after this to calm down. Have a brilliant November and I'll catch up with you for the next podcast, whenever that may be. I've got a bunch of tour dates coming up. The new live album is available on my website. All other podcast episodes are all on Spotify, iTunes, iMusic, Apple Music or whatever they're calling it nowadays. Whichever your favourite podcast app is, it's on there as well. And if you've enjoyed it, please give me five stars and tell your friends. And if you get to a gig, say hello. Oh, and here's a song from the new live album. Maybe this will relax you.
ageless peace forever free Show.